Welcome to the day 13 video, which is a continuation of section 7, natural logs. So remember, natural logs involve the base E. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to model situations with continually compounded interest. So we talked about interest before, compound interest. Now we're going to talk about continuous compound interest, which is going to involve base E, natural logs. You're definitely going to need a calculator for today's video. We're going to start with review, and then we're going to jump into two examples. All of today's examples are word problems, so just be prepared for that. I want to review first what exactly is compound interest, because today's video is all about continuously compounded interest, so we need to know what compound interest is first. I'm going to guess that most of you have a bank account, and you know that when you put money in your, your bank account that you get interest back on that bank account, back on the, the money that you put in. It's kind of the bank's way of saying thank you for investing money with us or for letting us use your money. So compound interest is interest calculated on the principal amount and any added interest. So really what compound interest means is that you get interest on what you put in and any other interest that you have. So this is different from simple interest. Simple interest is interest based only on the starting amount. So let's say I put $100 in the bank. 20 years from now, I'm only going to be getting interest on that $100 that I put in. Whereas compound interest is going to give me interest based off of the $100 I put in and any interest that I obtained after that. So compound interest is always better for you than simple interest. So before when we did compound interest, the interest was compounded a certain number of times per year. It was, counted, it was compounded monthly, so 12 times a year. It was compounded twice a year. It was compounded quarterly, so four times a year. Today what we're going to be doing is continuous compound interest. So that's compound interest that's being compounded or being added every second, just continuously without stop. So this is going to be a new formula. So the continuous compound interest formula is y equals pe to the rt. So p is your principal or starting amount. R is going to be your rate. T is going to be the time. And in this case, we mean the number of years. E is just the constant. Th that constant, that number E, that your rational number that we learned um, in the previous video. And then Y is going to be the final amount that you have in your bank account. So the amount after 10 years or 20 years, etc. So what we're going to be doing today is all going to be based off of this formula. So let's look at example one. It says, when Angelina was born, her grandparents deposited $3,000 into a college savings account, paying 4% interest compounded continuously. Okay, so this compounded continuously is how I know that I need to use the above formula. So the first bullet point, assuming there are no deposits or withdrawals from the account, what will the balance be after 10 years? So 10 years, this is my T. So I have Y equals PE to the RT. Okay, so P is the starting amount. Well, it says her grandparents deposited $3,000 times E. The rate is 4%. We're not going to use 4, though. Remember that you have to turn that into a decimal. So 4% is 0 0.04, and then I'm going to multiply by 10 years. First thing that I want to do is simplify this exponent. So this really is y equals 3,000 e, and then 0 0.04 times 10 is 0 0.4. And now I'm ready to just put this in the calculator. Remember that you have the e button. So you're going to do 3,000 times e to the power of 0.4. You have to remember that when you do the caret and the 0.4, that you are only taking an e to the power of 0.4 and not the 3,000. Okay, so when I did this in my calculator, 
I got the amount to be about $4,475.47. So if Angela's, Angelina's grandparents deposit $3,000 and she doesn't take out any money, after 10 years, she's going to have $4,475, which is pretty good. She gets almost $1,500 in interest um, off of what her grandparents deposited. Looking at the second bullet point, it says, how long will it take the balance to reach $10,000? Okay, so let's look at the question. How long will it take? So this means I'm looking for a T. So this time I'm solving for T. This $10,000 is my final amount. So that's going to go in for Y. So I have $10,000 equals, I still know that she deposited $3,000 because that came in the beginning of the question. And then I have E to the power 0 0.04 t. So this should look different than um, what we did previously. So now we're looking for t, which is part of the exponent. So I need to get that e alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3,000. 10,000 divided by 3,000 does not come out evenly. It turns out to be 10 thirds equals e to the power 0 0.04 t. Okay, now I need to remember that I'm solving for t. So there needs to be some way that I can break apart the e and the, that exponent, the 0 0.04t. At this point, there's no more simplifying I can do. So instead, I'm going to switch to exponential form. So this is going to be log base e of 10 thirds equals 0 0.04t. But remember, we don't actually write log base e. We write natural log. So this is the natural log of 10 thirds is equal to 0.04t. Last thing, the 0 0.04 and the t are being multiplied, so I want to divide by 0 0.04. So my t is going to be the natural log of 10 thirds divided by 0 0.04. Now you need to be careful putting this in your calculator. You need to remember that you're taking the natural log of 10 thirds. So you're going to do the natural log of 10 divided by 3, and then make sure you end your parentheses. Whatever that number is, you're then going to divide by the 0 0.04. When I did this, I got t to be 30.10 years. So if her, parent, her grandparents deposit $3,000, it's going to take about 30 years before she will have $10,000. And remember that $7,000 is just going to be from interest. Okay. And now the last question. It says, if her grandparents want Angelina to have $10,000 after 18 years, how much would they need to invest? So how much would they need to invest? So that means I'm looking for P. How much do I need to start with? This $10,000 is what I'm ending up with. That's why. My 18 years is T. So I have y equals p e to the r t. I'm saying I want to have $10,000. So that's my y. I'm looking for p, e. Okay, if I'm looking for p, it means I know r. So r is still that $4,000. So it's, or the 4%, I mean. So it's still 0 0.04, and then t is 18. I told you the first thing that I like to do is simplify that exponent. So I have 10,000 equals p e to the power 0 0.72. Okay, now I need to think, how am I going to solve for p? Right now the issue is the e. Well, the p and the e are being multiplied, so I can divide by e to the power 0 0.72. So my p is going to be 10,000 divided by e to the power 0 0.72. Okay, remember that you have the E button on the calculator, so you're going to do 10,000 divided by E caret to the 0.72. This ends up being $4,867.52. So Angelina's grandparents are going to have to invest $4,867 so that she will have $10,000 after 18 years. Okay, so that's the beginning, that's the end of the first question. Mind you, none of this is new really. None of the solving is new. The only thing that's new is setting up the problems. And then the solving is what we've been doing.
I know that sometimes it can be confusing deciding what to do. You know, do I convert to log form? Do I take the log of both sides? Do I just plain divide? You really have to think about what you're looking for, what you're solving for, and what information you have, and where you can go. Sometimes you're just going to have to manipulate the equation a little bit and see what you can do. So let's look at the next example. Okay, so first off, a little trivia for you. Did you know that Twinkies were invented in Illinois? They were invented in River Forest, Illinois in 1930. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Here's the example that I would like you to do. So you need to try the entire page, which is four problems. So you need to do all four. Pause the video, take 10 minutes, do these four on your own. When you come back, I will not be going over the answers. So make sure you try them. Come back when you are finished. Okay, so you should have had enough time to try this one on your own. First part, if they invested $8,000 at 3.75% interest compounded continuously, how much money would be in the account in 30 years? You should have gotten $24,641.73. You should have substituted for P, E, R, and T, um, and then solved for Y. Next one, how long would it take for the money to double? Okay, so they started with $8,000. So if it's going to double, I'm going to end up at $16,000. Equals E. The rate is still 0.375%. And I'm solving for T, because it's asking for how long. So you might not have known that you had to use the rate from the previous problem. But you know that you have to plug in some rate because you're solving for time. You're solving for t. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 8,000. So I get 2 equals e to the 0.0375t power. Okay, I'm solving for t. So the issue now is the e. How do I get rid of that e? Well, there's no other manipulating at this point I can do. There's nothing I can multiply by or divide or anything. So at this point, I'm done in exponential form. I need to switch to log form. You can switch to log form, or you can take the log of both sides. I am personally am going to switch to log form. So this is going to be log base e of 2 equals 0.0375t. Now remember, we don't really write log of e. That's just natural log. So I have the natural log of 2 equals 0.0375t. Solving for t. That's going to be natural log of 2 divided by 0.0375. So my time ends up being about 18.48 years. So it would take about 18 and a half years for Angelina's money to double. Okay, if you want the money to double in 15 years, what rate would you need? I want to double in 15 years, it's going to double to $16,000. I started at $8,000. I'm looking for a rate. So this is going to be R times 15. Dividing by 8,000, I get 2 equals E to the 15R. I'm going to switch to natural log or log form. So I get natural log of 2 equals 15R. So R ends up being natural log of 2 divided by 15. R ends up being about 0 0.0462. Remember that this is a decimal. This is really 4.62%. So the rate that you should have gotten is 4.62%. So hopefully you did both of those right. They're very similar. And then you had one more question. Okay, if they could only deposit $10,000 in the account above, at what rate would the account need to grow in order for Angelina to have $30,000 in 18 years? Setting up the problem, she wants $30,000 in 18 years. She starts with $10,000. And then it asks, at what rate? So that tells me that I don't know R. Solving this 
you should get R to be about 0 0.0610, which is 6.1%. So your rate would need to be about 6.1%. And again, you're going to solve this problem like you did the previous two. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have all problems completed with all of the work and all of the correct answers. If you have any blank spaces, you will not receive credit for the notes. One thing that I just want to emphasize again, what we learned today is for interest that's compounded continuously. So in the problem, it's specifically going to say that the interest is compounded continuously. If that's the case, do what we did today. Use the formula we did today, y equals PE to the RT. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing more word problems with a different formula. So I want you to remember, interest compounded continuously. That's going to be y equals PE to the RT. If you have any questions on today's video, please make sure that you write them down and bring them to class tomorrow. See you tomorrow.